Hi folks, just to go through a few things here. I tend to get a wide variety of jobs in my workshop. This is a job here for a vintage car. I've got it in the lathe so I can have a good look at the position of the spoke holes. It's a hub for, a, I believe it's for an Alvis, a 1920s Alvis. Um, so that's another job. I've got a different type of hub for it. A replacement hub, which is here, as you can see. And I've got to drill that. So that's another project that's come in. Uh, it looks simpler than I thought. The angles aren't too bad on those holes. In fact, the, the two rows, these two rows here are straight drilled through from the center axes. These are offset slightly, but I'll figure that out when I get to it, but they're not too far apart. The main thing will be to match these angles up, if you know what I mean, so that uh, the spokes sit in the right position uh, on the hub. Uh, other things such as the motorcycle engine which I'm slowly building up, machining for somebody or all sorts of these the girder forks which I'm explaining on film so as you can see in general I do a lot of jobbing work and I also make things such as these crankcases here which were milled from solid this is a very rare engine, you won't see many of these around a Humber 350 overhead cam um, when I first got this sort I had a couple of little bits of shaft and so on but I've gotten around to it and it's built up now virtually into a working engine apart from a little bit of work up here uh, it's it's done you know all sorts of stuff restoration of motorbikes another different type of forks I refer to forks in the video these are the type that have what I would class as a standard type of fork they have a spindle running right through that draws them together these are left hand thread and right hand thread so as you a bit like a turnbuckle when you turn on this square on the end of the shaft they move in and out so you can adjust the play on them the BSA ones excuse me these forks down here are different in that they just have these arms uh, these are the finished arms but I'm going to go through the process of finishing them so basically I just wanted to say that I tend to use the CNC facility uh, of the mill, the programming side of it less and less, I tend to use it more as a, as a manual mill but using the path pilot conversational programming which I find very very useful and for anyone that's not really thought, whoa, or anyone that thinks, oh, I could never use a CNC mill, you can. With conversational programming, it really changes it completely. It, it, you use it more and more. In fact, my manual mill, I hardly ever use it now. I just use the, the Tomac uh, for a lot of things. And in fact, in even making the forks, I didn't bore out the holes. I didn't re revert to using a drill. I used the conversational programming to mill a pocket but a circular pocket and it mills very accurately as you'll see in the video that I'm about to put out so here goes this is a different job for a change what I've got here is a pair of links for some BSA forks 1940s I think they're often either an M20 or an M21 motorcycle. Thousands, of, hundreds of thousands of these were made, well, maybe hundreds of thousands, for use during the Second World War. Many a dispatch rider will have ridden them. But basically, these links fit in here and fit in the other part of the forks on the yoke in a corresponding hole and form like a parallel motion. BSA are different in that they don't have a spindle running right through. Their spindles come in from either end and they're a bit of a nuisance to say the least because what happens is the, the link arms weigh and they, they can, I've seen them with up to an eighth of an inch worn off and there's, they're all integral, I think they were like forging and the only way to remake them is to cut these off, bore out the holes precisely and make new arms drill them through before you braze them braze them into position cut them in half and then the links are parallel but I'll show you that later at the moment I've got uh, the other pair of links in the table and I'm ready to run 
uh, some conversational programming here you have it set up it's the same program as I ran on this last night so I'm pretty sure it'll work okay I'll just shut down when I set the uh, coolant up because I need to clean the, the magnetic base and uh, put the guard back okay it's a very slow feed on this it's a difficult setup there's not that much grip so I don't want to go crazy with it Just looking there we are, that's the program starting. Now well, I better switch on the bog buster. And as it see, there we go. Like I say, it's a very, very slow feed. But the, the hole is very accurate. In fact, I might even have to ease it slightly once I uh, go about brazing it or allow the capillary action to take place when I brace them in a position. Either that or I'll file a few little uh, marks or little grooves across the bore, uh, which encourage the silver solder or the brazing spelter to move and um, flow down the uh, capillary action down these little grooves. Anyway, there we go, it's putting now, and as you can see, it's a very slow cut. That's it. I can't really see much here because of the lighting and also the proximity. Uh, maybe a bit better there now, not really. Uh, it's almost through the two links. Um, it's got about 0.3 of an inch to go. Very slow, but very accurate. I'll run another pass. Through at the same speed uh, just to take it out full size uh, as per the dimensions which are 9 sixteenths of an inch which is 0.5625 uh, on the program I put in 0.5624 to get it to that slight oversize to enable the ground bars to go in the bars while that is cutting uh, 916 is not a common material in EN24, so this is my EN24, so I had little choice but to run off a few uh, inches of uh, ground stock and there's a compressor kicked in and it gets rather noisy. And that's the end of that program, but we'll try the test bar in, well it's not really a test bar, just know that this end is one so smaller than the other end of it and as you can see it just enters in fact that's a good fit in there but uh, that end doesn't however I'll rerun the program again another pass and it will uh, it will go in it's just that little bit of spring in the system so I'm quite pleased that uh, it works out okay there we see with the second pass it's a it's a good fit. Everything seems to be fine with it. That's it right down to the table without too much play. So next job will be to just move the x-axis 3.75, zero it, and that will be right over the position of the second hole. That's it reset in the x-axis and the program started again and uh, it's just about to Hit the top of the work, as you see it's a very slow speed, speed. Uh, around about now we should see it uh, just taking its first bite of the paint. No, it's still not yeah, there we go. I just saw some paint flying. Well, the second hole is just about finished, it's got 50,000 to go, and that sort of completes the work in the mill. The next job will be, as I say, go to the lathe and part the uh, stock off the length, and then through bore it, tap inside for a quarter inch 
cycle thread or BSF. I'll have to show you which one it is. I'll check that from the uh, from the job itself. Uh, I've got some screws that fit in there. Okay, well there you see the two links that I bought out on the CNC mill. And this is uh, some of the stock that I cut. Uh, and the idea would be to mount this, put a couple of clamps on here, put it on the, I've got a spare drilling table, I'll put that on the vise next door and I'll braze these into place. I'm just going to do the other two and then I'll do all the brazing in one session. We're just about to braze these using silver solder which is a, a silver uh, brass, silver alloy, uh, brass, silver and bronze whatever. 55% of that is silver, very expensive stuff but great for this sort of work, good capillary action, draws it into the joints but the one thing you have to be certain of is to keep it clean, uh, mix up with fresh water, uh, put a dab of dishwash liquid in, in it uh, then when you apply it to the work it doesn't run off. If you were to apply that, uh, they see it's kind of stuck to the work quite, quite easily. I put plenty on I'm just dabbing this on at the moment. Uh, I'm going to put the camera down to uh, assemble this. And there you see the setup that I use for brazing these. This will keep the arms of the links nice and flat and square to our table. I'll have to heat up along here, spread the heat along the bar because I don't want to ruin my, my V blocks. Similarly, here, heat this up, heat it from behind a little till the centre is nice and cherry red. Or dull red and then put the spelter on. Unfortunately really I can't, uh, I don't want to keep the camera rolling while I'm brazing. I'll just get on with it and show you when it's finished. There you see the two assemblies finished uh, brazing. Uh, next job will be to cut the little stubs off, cut them in half down here and then I'll put these each of these arms in the milling machine and mill an oil groove around the outside using some kind of thread cutting arrangement on the Tormac mill with the software wizards that are on the Pathpilot program. So we'll get that done next. So that's a good night's work finishing these off. Uh, it's always uh, nice to see them back together again. 